suspect is wanted. Make him car and license plate. Good tips equal dollars. 1-800-273-TIPS. That's 1-800-273-TIPS. Treasure Coast Crime Stoppers works for you. That's 1-800-273-TIPS. Funded by the Office of Florida's Attorney General. You are listening to WSTU, Stewart, Jupiter, and Indian Town, Martin County's Heritage Station. It's time now for the Casey Ingram Show on WSTU. The opinions expressed are those of the program host and guest and not necessarily those of WSTU. WSTU does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WSTU. It's time to call in with your questions and comments at 220-9788, 220-WSTU. And now, here's Casey Ingram. Welcome back to the second half hour, and I just got to remind everybody again, this is Fair Week. Uh, we've been waiting all year for the Fair Week, and it's going on right now through the 18th. Uh, if you haven't been out there, definitely need to check it out. And if for some reason you can't make it out, check out their Facebook page. Uh, there's a lot of wonderful coverage of the Fair, the 4-H'ers, their projects, and you get to see what's the action uh, right from the comfort of your home. But it's it's nothing like going out there and visiting the Fair. Uh, lots of fun, and again, don't forget about that. It's through the 18th and uh remember that uh thursday night praise and celebration night featuring kane and that's coming up tomorrow night um next i have a wonderful guest that i have been um very honored to meet and anxious to have this show i have armand grossman and uh you can check out more from armand as we're talking through the show remember armandgrossman.com um often uh, armand is often referred to as a true renaissance man armand has been a teacher professor high school basketball coach businessman author, actor, TV personality, community leader, and international speaker. As a graduate student, the study of human behavior spawned a lifelong passion. An extensive, pervasive examination and study in the success factors of life was his calling. The past 50-plus years provided unique, exceptionally broad-based personal experiences. Extensive research and countless interviews culminated in the discovery of five common foundational human traits that are embraced by successful individual companies. Beginning as a high school guidance counselor and basketball coach, he realized early success when his teams lost only six games over a four-year stint. He felt the, um, the mental conditioning and preparation he taught his players was the primary contributing factor to their success. Later, serving as senior vice president to one of America's largest real estate corporations, he gained insights into the inner workings of corporate finance. As an elected official in Florida, he developed a strong sense of community and patriotism. Having been appointed to the board of trustees of a large state university, he served as chairman of student and academic affairs. There, he initiated new and innovative curriculum that enhanced the educational experience of many students. Most recently, he served as an adjunct professor of entrepreneurship at one of America's most foremost business universities. Recently, lecturing throughout China has provided him with additional enhanced insights into the complex arena of personal achievement. Named as one of Florida Atlantic University's College of Education's top 50 all-time graduates, Armand will forever be a teacher. Always intrigued by the psychology of personal performance, he has delivered over 1,500 seminars worldwide on the subject of human achievement. Committed to continually impacting the lives of his students, he has often posed the question, what is it that makes some people so successful in life while others are not? Armin attended Kent State University, Florida Atlantic University, and Harvard University. Although he has earned a BA, Master of Education, and MBA degrees, he continues to advance the concept that life experiences remain the greatest teacher. He's the father of two sons, Michael and Mark, and he and his wife, Gina, have been married for 33 years. Armand is now joining us on the show, and uh, he's going to talk about his new book that's coming out, The Privilege of Adversity, which one of the favorite quotes he, he cited from that was from C.L. Lewis, hardships often prepare ordinary people for an extraordinary destiny. Armand, it's good to have you on the show today. Hey, see, it's good to be with you. So this is a really exciting topic and something that has piqued a lot of people's interest, Armand. Um, first of all, let's step back one second uh, and talk about the privilege of adversity and why you decided to write this book. I wrote the book because, as you uh, had indicated, and thank you very, very much for that very warm introduction, it's always been fascinating to me is why some people are so 
successful in life and others are not. And I've posed that question throughout the years in my seminars, in my classrooms, and even as a high school guidance counselor many years ago. And uh, it's intrigued me it, it, when we look at certain individuals and, and uh, how they became so successful. And it's also interesting to note that some of these people who are very successful in life financially not, were not necessarily there and have not been there their entire lives. But I've rephrased the question in this way. I've not only said, why are some people so successful in life, which I continue to beg that question, but somehow I've also translated a little bit and, and why do some people have such satisfying lives and others have less satisfying lives? And the reason I changed it a little bit is because uh, when I asked why some people are so successful, I often got a lot of blowback by the people would say, well, you know, our money isn't everything. Well, I didn't mention money. Uh, money is an important ingredient in life, but it isn't necessarily the tell-all. We know some very wealthy people who are not happy, and I know people who are not particularly affluent who are very happy with their lives and have very satisfying and rewarding lives. So I changed it a little bit, and it's uh, it's just very interesting in all aspects of life, whether it be in athletics, business, education, whatever level, and why some people are so great, wonderful achievers. Well, Armand, I think it's a very interesting topic because, um, you know, I, I know a lot of people, and, and I'm sure you have a, as well met a lot of people in passing, and some of the stories are absolutely fascinating. And I think it's important for people to realize that because you had um, adverse conditions maybe growing up uh, when you're younger, it doesn't mean you can't still be successful. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I think that that is uh, it's, it's critical. And thus, I titled the book which I find fascinating is everyone said, oh, that's a great title. The Privilege of Adversity. That's a classic oxymoron. Why is it that adversity can be a privilege? Because it's that particular time that often people have a disconnect with their early values and script theory that was inculcated early on in life. Let me explain that. Early on in life, children are very well programmed by their, generally initially by their parents. And uh, when I was in grad school a long time ago, the predominant theory of uh, interpretation of uh, human behavior, which was very prominent at the time, was transactional analysis. There were three ego states, the parent, adult, and child ego states. But really what gripped me was the idea of script theory, that we have a script playing in our head. And that script gives us permission to win or permission to achieve, permission to do this and so forth. That script is early inculcated by parents by way of example a child may hear his parents say you know tommy you are just like your uncle fred uncle fred was always lazy boy you're just like uncle fred well he had, they just told the child he's lazy and other little direct and indirect subtle meanings that that, that are attached to that sort of things are, are, are create a, a script in that child's head the underpinning of that script are the values that are imbued heavily upon the child as well. And sometimes those values permeate the entire existence of the, of the life of the life of an individual. But and they wonder, why can't I get what I want? Because they find that they self-sabotage themselves when they are and they really are close to achieving what they thought that they really want to achieve. But they are denied that now the privilege of adversity comes into play when under adverse situations trying situations often that value system is deconstructed and a new value system is grasped and said what am i doing wrong here why do i why am i not getting what i want often i've had people in my seminars say why is that guy so rich and i'm not i'm a lot smarter than he is well something is there's a there's a disconnect and 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 that has to be that takes place during those ter periods of adversity. The old adage that uh, the smooth seas do not make great sailors. Uh, and, and this goes back years all the way through uh, to Seneca and uh, early philosophers. And it's a privilege of adversity. It, it truly is. And again, um, as we're speaking here, you can go to armandgrossman.com. Iggy, if you can put a link in the Casey? comments, I'd appreciate it. Can you hear me, Armand? Armand, can you hear me? Um, now I can, yes. Okay. I was just letting everybody know your website, that they can go there to find out more information about you and your book, The Privilege, the Privilege of Adversity. Um, Armin, let's cut to the chase here. And let's. you talked about the five traits of success. Let's talk about those five traits. 
I distilled those, Casey, over a long period of time. I look at all the attributes of uh, successful people, and that begins with a definition of success. The definition of success is a rather fluid definition. I have lectured a number of times at older individuals and spoke and asked individuals who are in their 80s, how do you define success? Then I asked college kids, how do you define success? And it is diametrically different at that with age. When you are older, the values of life are far more focused upon health and family and, and financial attainment, but enough to be comfortable. Whereas young people define success, oh, I want to be successful. I want a jet plane. I want a yacht. I want this. I want that and so forth. So during life achievement and, 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 and becoming older and wiser, we understand what really are the fundamental values of life that contribute significantly to the happiness and well-being and satisfaction to the individual. So I looked at all these traits, then I interviewed countless individuals, I read numerous biographies, and I looked at the five foundational traits from which they all come, and I suspect you'd like me to talk about I those. I definitely do. I know the list. And, and I would often use the, the hand as a measure. Okay. So if we look at the five traits, and if we look at the five traits, the thumb, without the thumb, we have no grip. And the first trait is trust. The, the ability to trust other individuals, to have trust in yourself, to thine own self be true. And in business, it is absolutely critical. But even more than that, in relationships, critical relationships. And relationships, as we have discovered through the grant study at the Harvard University, which is now 82 years old, when they started back in the uh, during the Depression, and they looked at individuals who were very successful, quote unquote, in their med school versus some of the blue collar individuals in in, uh, in Boston. And they f tracked their lives. Interestingly enough, after 50 years, they still had the same amount of equal amount of alcoholism, equal amount of divorce, equal amount of bankruptcies, equal amount and so forth. And one of the things that contributed significantly to the happiness of the individual was relationships, primarily familial, family, and uh, a good marriage can be very, not necessary, but can be very, very helpful. Uh, a relationship with friends. And the basis of that is trust in, 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 the, in, in the individual. In the world of business, it is absolutely critical. And it's like a vase. Once it's broken, it can be put back together, but it'll never be the same. And as some of the friends that I love the most, and I often use my own life as, as a, my experiences, are the people that I trust and admire. And I know if I tell that person something, man, it's good. As you mentioned, I've been in the real estate business almost all my life. Real estate contracts can be uh, an inch and a half thick with with all the whereas's and the wherefores and this, that, and the other thing. I learned something about contracts from a friend of mine, Jim Mandich, who was a tight end for the Dolphins in the 72 season and had a great sports show in Miami, WQAM, and was my friend, he's from Cleveland. My friend all my life passed away a few years ago. He went into WQAM to sign the contract. They gave him this big, thick contract that Jim Manage will do this. He took that contract and threw it in a wastebasket. He said, give me a piece of paper. He said, I, Jim Manage, will do sports shows from, five, from 3 to 5 for WQAM Monday through Friday, and you will pay me this amount. Here's my contract. <laughs> it was simple. And if they didn't trust him, and then the contract is only as good as your ability to defend it in the court of law and your ability to pay legal fees and so forth. And that's what I've learned in the real estate business. Trust is an essential ingredient. Huge. Second trait, the pointing finger, vision. People who are successful have a vision. They see things. They have a wonderful view of the world. They see opportunities, and they take that opportunity, and they see themselves as being successful in that particular area, and they see the pursuit. And notwithstanding failure, as you mentioned, I taught entrepreneurship, which is a class in psychology. Be prepared to fail. Most entrepreneurs do, and they fail more than once, and that is a great learning experience. I watched a great Super Bowl, as we all did this last Sunday. There were two fantastic quarterbacks. They, these kids are great. And Julian Hurts, Jalen Hurts, after the game said, uh, I asked him an interview, he said, well, it was a learning experience. He's a 24-year-old learner. And uh, he said, I just, I learned from that experience. That's quite a comment. 
he was coached by his father, by the way, and I'm sure his father put those values in him early on. But they have a great sense of vision. It's a very the mature third comment. Trait also, I'm sorry? I, I said it's a very mature comment. It's a very mature comment for a 24-year-old kid who played. He was incredibly – I saw two of the best quarterbacks that I've ever seen in that Super Bowl. And both had professional fathers in, uh, in their home, which I'm sure created a value system that was very powerful in their lives, without, without doubt. The third trait, and I mentioned the hand. Are you ready? Yes. It's the, give, it's the giving finger. It's the giving finger. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> it means the third trait is generosity. So if somebody, say you're driving. And you cut somebody off, and they 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 give that hand gesture. Oh, you read Armin's book. Oh, that's great. I, that's that's the generosity. That's the giving finger. <laughs> Armin, I'm sharing the giving finger that's with the it. Facebook viewers because they can't see you, but I just did. So. <laughs> oh, you can't see me. I can see you. But I, I shared that. it. So. <laughs> oh, they're very well, very well. And it's the it's ability a giving to. Finger. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And people who are successful are generous. Now, isn't that interesting? Not only their first thought is philanthropic and, and their largesse, they, they donate large amounts of money and so forth, which is essential to our society. But it's much more than that. You know, there's an old adage, a man never stands so tall as when he stoops to help another. And it can be measured even in the most simple of gestures, by holding the door for the person behind you, by waving somebody through in traffic and so forth. And it's the spirit of, it's not always me first, but maybe I can be of assistance to you. And maybe it's the old adage of helping the little old lady across the street. But it's giving. And it's giving to people. And, and people are, are not afraid to do that who, are, who are, have very satisfying lives. Now, the outgrowth of generosity and this is the secret sauce to happiness, is gratitude. It's gratitude for where you are, for the goodnesses in your life. And that sense of gratitude, no matter what is, 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 is happening in a person's life, has huge benefits. And, 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 and the benefits, not only the psychological benefits, but the health benefits as well. It lowers blood pressure. In my book, I advocate keeping a gratitude journal and writing down things that you are gratitude for. And when you begin to focus on those good things in your life, it's an amazing thing what happens. And suddenly it takes your eye off of the maladies of life and you begin to look upon life in a different, through a different lens. And suddenly you become to realize, wow, I have a lot to be thankful for. I must tell you that I start my day nearly every day, even in this weather, I don't heat my pool, but I take an early morning swim. It's a good wake up. It's a good that wake up before is. my first pot of coffee, and uh, it will wake me up. But I also <laughs> I have a short prayer, and my prayer is very simple. Good morning. It's me again. Today may be a little shorter because it's awfully cold, but it's the same prayer as I said yesterday, the day before, and the day before, and it's simply this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know you had your hand in the whole thing. All I ask is the ability to live up to your expectations and the guidance. Amen. But it's a prayer of gratitude. How did it ever get this good? And I had I had adversity in my life, Casey. I had tough times. I'm not immune to it. And those were the learning experiences. Those were valuable experiences. And it were those experiences that led me to expand my horizon significantly in the study of human behavior specifically if I may share. It was January 1977. It snowed in Miami. I don't recall the exact date, but I cite it in my book. It snowed. Snowflakes were coming. It's the only time it ever happened. I was in my office. I had a series of tapes from a motivation speaker who I came to admire. I never listened to those tapes. Tell you why I didn't listen to those tapes. I had three college degrees. I've been to law school. I don't need motivation tapes. I don't need that. I have an education. The greatest impediment to learning and growth is when you deny yourself opportunities through your own arrogance. So I got home. My my, I had window shakers at that time, reverse cycle. If you've been around Florida long enough, you'll remember these. And then you could research the cycle and put on the heat. But if it's under 40, over four, under 40 degrees, the re reverse cycle doesn't work. 
Well, my home had a very nice fireplace in it. And so I had some wood and I put a fire in the fireplace, not for ambience, but for the fact that I wanted the heat. And I said, you know what? I'm going to sit and open up these tapes. It was a very difficult time in my life. I had made some bad investment decisions and uh, got my head handed to me. So I said, I'm going to listen to these tapes. And all of a sudden, the old adage, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. And these tapes all of a sudden changed my attitude, changed my perspective, changed my outlook on life, opened up doors. I couldn't get enough of it. And I, and I put these tapes in my car, not not an eight track, <laughs> but cassette, cassette tapes. <laughs> and I would play. I never listened to radio. I listened to these over and over and over and over. And to this day, to this day, I can recite many of them. And it was a cathartic experience, and all of a sudden things began to change. Why did they change? Because they changed my attitude and I changed my outlook on life. And I was no longer arrogant about the fact that I have these college degrees, which is really stupid. And I and I suddenly opened up the horizons and 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 p- things began to change. The fourth trait, the ring finger. There are three parts to the to the, to the ring finger, as they are in every other finger. And there are three parts to the fourth trait. The fourth trait is self-care. The underpinning of self-care is personal responsibility. You take it on. It's your decision. And there are three parts. And that is your own wisdom. And I loved your previous interview. He was spot on. Vocational education is fantastic, and it's a shame that we have maligned vocational education because we call college education higher education, so there must be something, if you don't do that, that must be lower education. Such is not the case. Good point. Such is not the case. Call a plumber. Call an electrician. And if the person has those skills, and there's so many jobs available, and if they have any ounce of entrepreneurship inside them, and they buy a couple of panel trucks and hire a couple of people, and they've got a lot that can be extremely rewarding financially. The second part is your own health. You are responsible for that. And it's interesting. I can't overemphasize this. Health is wealth. And taking care of yourself, and and, with, and you hear the whole things about diet and exercise, and of course they're true, not smoking, over, and certainly not uh, drugs and that sort of thing that can be very harmful to an individual's health. It's interesting that the lifespan in America has declined the last three years for males in America. It's gone it is down. interesting, yes. And why? And the reason is, is because of drugs. And pe- people are dying at an early age, and and, and also not only drugs, but self-inflicted suicide. Hmm. And and why? Because of a, uh, obviously it's a less than satisfying life that a person would go to such measures. So they are responsible. And the third area of self-care, which is a hotbed with me, is your own, you're responsible for your own personal finance. You're, you're responsible for your personal attainment. And I go into this at length of the psychology of money. Why is it some people do have some and others are only wish that they would? And actually, the doors in America are open to anyone, anyone, anyone. I emphasize they are not closed to anyone. I've, I've lived it. I've seen it. I've saw it happen. I've had some of the best students in the world that came from minority groups and went on to be extremely successful. So I will not buy into that whatsoever. But if a person was raised with those values that said something along the lines, you heard this misquoted from the Bible, the love of the money is the root of all evil. Well, well, if that's the case, well, I don't want any part of that. Well, that isn't what the scriptures say. It's actually the love of money is the root of all evil. And so money makes a great master. It makes a horrible servant. Excuse me. It makes a great servant, makes a horrible master. And uh, so it's uh, it becomes a, a part of life. And uh, is there benefits to financial attainment? No question. How to is it going to create happiness? Not necessarily at all. But what it does do, Casey, what it does do, it alleviates some of the stressors in of our life. If we're not continually worried about making this bill or making that and so forth, it also gives a great deal of autonomy and freedom. So the ability, if I have it. I, a recent survey showed that 67% of people going to work hate their job. That's terrible. Mm, that That's is. too bad. Now, some people can't wait till Monday morning and don't like to see Friday come. Why? They absolutely love what they're doing. And as a result of that, of course, it can be very successful. And the last trait, 
I'll, I'll move on, is the little finger, and that's faith. That is faith. And that is faith takes, and people often give me a, well, Armin, I don't want to get into a spiritual, oh, that's your choice. But there has to be faith. If you start a business, there has to be faith. If you have a relationship with your spouse, there has to be faith. There has to be trust. All of these fit together in the fist and the grip, and they work cohesively and very well in the lives of people who have very satisfying lives. You know, Armin, as I've been sitting here listening to you, and I really um, kind of hanging on every word, and I'm sure the listeners are as well. I have a friend uh, that really her her life has just changed. It's wonderful, and one thing that she did was affirmations, which is basically what you're saying. No um, question. Positive affirmations and positive self-talk is a reflection of what's going on inside. And it, and then that becomes works. a manifestation. And the other you thing. You create that world. It it did. It did for her. She she did her, her affirmations and it really became reality. It's a wonderful, wonderful story. And the other thing you just touched on was 67% of the people are not happy at their jobs. And that's one thing, you know, I just had uh, Indian River State College uh, president on. And it, you spend more time at work than anywhere else once you're an adult. And it's so important to do what you love and do what you like. And, you know, I can't encourage, especially younger people, right? I mean, that's some advice you can give them is make sure you like what you do. Having served on the board of trustees at Florida Atlantic University and chairman of student and academic affairs, I'm well aware of what Indian River College has done. And my congratulations to the president. And he his, uh, his comments were spot on. Uh, Paul, I appreciate you tuning in. He said, great point about labeling educational levels and stigmatizing youth. My second son, Dylan's path from Martin County child at risk to a high functioning employee at O'Donnell's is a testament to this. I also agree with Armin's comments on nutrition, faith, and balanced health. Great show. Thank you, Paul. Um, I also want to say your book, we, we have to, you, you really cover this all in depth with the book. And Lou Holtz has done the foreword on your, your book. Um, he mentioned, I, one of his quotes was, most of the successful people profiled within this book come from very humble beginnings. Lou Holtz, College Hall of Fame football coach, grew up in Ohio, and in his own words, quote, we would have needed to have a raise to be considered poor. <laughs> and, you know, that, that, that's a really great quote. And I think that you you spot a lot of these examples in your book. I love I, I he was he's one of the men that I admire greatly, greatly. And Lou Holtz is very, very special. And I was so proud that he would write the forward in the book for me. And the book is filled. There's there's a lot of stories in the book. I think we have one minute left. Is we do. We're thing? just one minute. ArminGrossman.com. Uh, and people, when can they they expect to see that book or where do they need to watch? They can pre-order the book now. They can pre-order the book. Pre-order the book? On the website. Armand It's going to be published soon. There's a couple of hitches in the publication right now that I didn't anticipate. Not a but, problem. Uh, ArminGrossman.com, A-R-M-A-N-D, Grossman, G-R-O-S-S-M-A-N.com. Be sure to get there. Pre-order the book. It's going to be a really good one, and it's it's full of really good advice for people of all ages, but especially if you have a, a young person in uh, high school, college, great read. Absolutely. It's a wonderful parenting book as well. Something for everybody, right, Armand? So, thank, it really is. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being on the show, and we'll see you all next Wednesday.